That's right. We're in the house. Black Power is the general, y'all. We're in the house. We're in the house. About to drop this heavy metal tonight. For all my family out there, uh, December 8th, 2019, the Egyptian origins of ancient Egypt, the next up on the, on the, uh, 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 on the chalkboard of, of wisdom and knowledge, we got the Egyptian origins of ancient India, okay, December 8, 2019, live stream, lecture, have your ass in the place, all right? For all those out there that's seeking the advanced teachings of General Sara Sun Sadi, too raw for motherfucking YouTube, excuse me, YouTube. You got to go on over there to the General's Patreon. That's what I said. General Sara Sun Sadi, and get that fire. You understand what I'm saying? Because if I spit it too, you know, if I get, if I turn into a naga on this motherfucker, and spit that fire for real, for real. You know the Jews on Jew too. They're going to be upset at me. Okay? And so we want to keep, you know, the lessons. We want to keep them hard. We want to keep them hard. But, you know, we have to, you know, we got to put a little, little tone on it on you too. And so we don't want to do that. And for all those that want to keep it raw and shit, you got to go on the other platforms to get that raw material. KingCity.com, we know Black Friday is coming up, but it ain't Black Friday if you're spending what? It's only Black Friday if you're spending your money with black people. Okay, so don't fake the fuck, nigga. You niggas gonna be standing out there, you understand, in line with them Pecker Woods ready to run up in goddamn Macy's and, and Walmarts and, you know, all the and Best Buy and shit. And spend your money with the enemy trying to destroy you. Get on over there to KingSetty.com online marketplace. We got your DVD lectures. We got that classic setting. We got that new advanced setting. We got t-shirts, hoodies. We got jewelry for the kings. Got jewelry for the queen. Got a boatload of new products going up as we speak. So you need to go on over there and empower yourself with blackness. Today, we're standing on from yesterday. We was on General Setty. Page yesterday, now nah, today we on Sara Soon Seti. <coughs> Putting that fire down. God damn it, every chance we get. Today we dealing with the Nile Valley dwarfs. You understand? And how they influence Norse mythology. Now, you know, why am I doing this? You understand what I'm saying? Because up under there, see, it's the time. Because y'all know it's the Nordic season. And you niggas love these Nordics. That's why your, your major holidays is around they holidays. Y'all know Yule is coming up. Y'all call it Christmas. Y'all know Saturnalia is coming up. Y'all call it Christmas. Okay, and so that's the Nordic year. And we understand Nordic, meaning North. And it means a whole lot of other things. But I'll get into that later when I get ready to get into the Yule, get into uh, Saturnalia. Coming up after this. I'm just warming you up. Getting you, you know, so when you see shit, you can have a better understanding. You know, many people, when they get they, just like little children, go to the chessboard. Don't even know how to move the, the goddamn, uh, the, the pieces on the board. They just get up there and move them however they want to move them. And sometimes that might be the best answer. But when you playing another man's game, you got to know how the pieces is moved. And so... You know, we having an understanding today so you can peel back the veil of all these symbolism because this is a very occult time of the year where a lot of his symbols is all around the place. And they right in front of your eye. And you get up there and you and you glow you more glossy eyed than these damn crackers. Straight up. You got them all you got them all over your wall. And you're mad because we own your ass. You know. This year, next year, any other goddamn year. And you supposed to be an African. So, you know, when we talking about dwarves, in reality, just like I went over yesterday, there are really no dwarves in Africa. What we call the twa is not a dwarf. A dwarf is somebody that got a genetic mutation. Okay, and when you look at the uh, the twa in Africa, they're not dwarves. They, 
That they're just small Africans. That's all they is. Their body is proportionate where when you look at a dwarf and shit, they their arms is all short. You understand? And shit, head big as hell. Legs is short and shit. You know, where when you look at a twa, they're proportionate. So that's the you know the bigger difference. And when you look at the twa, it's 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 just a you know one of the sub uh, uh, I, I don't even want to say species because that's not what they I don't want to use that term you know there's many different types of African people and so we got a classification of small Africans and so we're the only race on the planet that got such a classification no other race whether it be Caucasoid whether it be Asian or Arab or any of that got a, 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 a portion of their population of they race that's small people. And I'm talking about not just having one. A, it's a it's a grouping. You see what I'm saying? And it could be thousands, hundreds of thousands of millions of them. Where a dwarf is, a, you know, one individual genetic. He might get with another dwarf and create another dwarf. But it's not a, 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 a class, a grouping of them. It's just a particular individual who got a genetic mutation okay and so we want to deal with that so when we start looking at you know when you look back into the nordic mythology and when we say nordic we talking about the vikings let me bring a map up real quick we don't go to work you understand it that okay bingo bingo here we go So you see right here, you see Norden, or Nordic, okay, which is North, and it also is a, 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 sim, a, a similar uh, origin of, as far as vocabulary in a language for uh, which, okay, is also, uh, uh, in a language, is also symbolic of the term which. Because in, in their language, you got the Norns, okay? In, in, in Greek mythology, they call the Fates. But a Norn is a witch. So when you're talking about Nordic, you understand what I'm saying? You see the undertone of witchcraft, okay? And you need to know that, which originated in Britain, modern witch and old witchcraft too. But even though I can, we, we, you know, it even was originated in Rome and Greece. That was the foundation of that shit. You see what I'm saying? But modern rich crowd uh, was founded in, in Great Britain. Okay? So we need to know. And so, we use another term for this area. Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Scandinavia. Land of the scandalous. See, when you go off into the Vikings, so many, you know, words of, 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 of destruction come up out of that area. Just like the term vandals. You know, they another group, Germanic uh, uh, tribe that destroyed Rome. The vandals, the, you know, where you get the word, the term vandalism. You see what I'm saying? And so today, once you understand even the term berserkers. See, berserk, that come up out of the Nordic vocabulary. You understand, the, the, the berserkers were what you would call the uh, special forces of the Vikings. They were the most sick motherfuckers. When they get ready, they get high on mushrooms and, and fucking uh, get drunk as a motherfucker. And they would send them in as the special forces to destroy everything. Man, woman, and child, burn everything. So berserk, berserkers, uh, vandal, vandal, uh, vandalize. Then you get Scandinavia, land of the scandalous. So when you start dealing with uh, the days of the week, and we went over, and I'm and I, this is a double header. I'm gonna go right back to the uh, days of the week, the occult origins of the days of the week, the planets, uh, and uh, and the months. You know, the symbolisms of it. You know what I'm saying? After this. 
But you know, when you uh you look you 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 understand that the first European calendar was the Roman calendar. You understand we see all of the deities and you know and the gods and the how scandalous they are. You know who you know the ones that they venerate are the most scandalous of all the deities, such as Saturn, who is Cronus, the the who sacrifices his own damn children, eat his own children. Mars, a, a warmonger, ruthless, bloodthirsty warmonger. And so when, even when you're talking about the days of the week, you got Thor, which is Thursday, a drunkard. You know, when you're talking about the Vikings, you're talking about drunkards. Motherfucking mushroom taking ass, you know, sick motherfuckers, you know, no mercy. You know what I'm saying? Odin, uh, the father of the, the, the gods, a drunkard. You see, and the other one for Tuesday, Tiwa, another warmonger. You see what I'm saying? So all these deities is warmongers. But what's so prevalent in uh, the Nordic mythology is the dwarves. Even when you go to the Lord of the Rings, and we about to get off into that. You understand what I'm saying? You see the dwarves. Now, we understand that the Twa originated at the headwaters of the Nile. Okay, we're going over this quickly today, and we're going to hit on points that we didn't hit on yesterday. You understand? Uh, as you can even see on this, this, this statue of Bass, if you look around his shoulders and his chest, you will see the leopard skin, which means he's a priest. You understand what I'm saying? That just, you know... You need to identify that size and symbol. The leopard skin is symbolic of the Nile Valley priesthood. So this, this Bess is a priest. And not only is he a priest, he invented the craft. He invented the priesthood. This is where it starts. And uh, Twa was looked at as uh, magicians, the medicine men. Because in the at the headwaters of the, the Great Lakes region, of Africa, which we're going to deal with, that is the beginning of the Nile River, okay? And so in the Congo, the rainforest, you got over 10,000 some uh, herbs and vegetation, over 10,000 different animal species in that region. And so because they were, that, this is their homeland. You understand what I'm saying? This is where you get all these stories of magical forests and this, that, and the third. And you see that Ptah was also a Twa. Rarely did, do they show you that because they don't want you to make the identification of who founded ancient Egypt. Because ancient Egypt is named, the Greeks gave it the term Egypt, but it's named after Ptah. Okay, and so Bess and Ptah are two Twa. I call them dwarves because that's, you know, it, it gives it a magical uh, cointation. But I made it clear that they're not dwarves. They are actually just a small African. That's all they, they are proportional. Their head and their body is proportional, where a dwarf is not proportional. Okay, let's be clear about that. And so if you see Egypt, you see E-G-Y-P-T, you add the A-H at the end, Egypt Ptah. Okay, and so we understand, so I don't understand why people is uh, asking the question as, where did e ancient Egypt start? When you look at the normal palette, which is one of the oldest uh, documents of ancient Egypt, okay, showing Narma coming down and uniting uh, upper and, and lower Egypt, okay, and you see in the front of the royal train, you see the twa. They, they, with the cap of Ptah, these are the priests. They got the totem poles. You see Haru, you see Anubis, and you see the placenta of Nama, which shows that the Africans, uh, they deified childbirth, okay? They deified childbirth in understanding they deified the Holy Mother. Here you see the, the Twa. These are the craftsmen. Okay, that's very clear. I want you to understand that Ptah was the deity of craftsmen. Those who 
the the iron smiths, the blacksmiths, the ones that smelt the, the 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 masons, the ones that constructed the pyramid. And we have to understand that the age of the great pyramids, Ptah was the supreme deity. We have to understand that. That under under the under the worship of Ptah, the greatest monuments that ever been constructed on the planet was constructed under the the, the, uh, the worship of Ptah, who was a Twa. Now, if you look on these, look at the two Twa, what they're uh, making at this point is a necklace. So when you talk, and they come up out of Nubia, they were also uh, uh, identified with gold. Because these are the Nubians, these are the Tysetians, these are the blacksmiths. You see what I'm saying? And if you look, you will see that both got on you see the uh, the triangle apron, which is showed that they are brothers of the craft. Okay, they brothers of the craft. They got on they uh, uh they got on their aprons. They got on their sacred aprons. And so you got to know these signs and symbols. These ain't just no you know. If you go into the white man book, then he might show the twa as being like little clowns and shit. The the entertainment of ancient Egypt. Just to, show, to throw you a curveball so you won't truly understand that these are the children of Ptah and the founders of all civilization on the planet. And then you make it clear that these are Africans. You look at that, that bass, right, and all the other bass. But you see that right there, you already know that motherfucker look like uh, uh, George, uh, not George Foreman, uh, Joe Frazier. The motherfucker for Muhammad Ali. That motherfucker look like Joe Frazier. Best. The God, God is best. You see what I'm saying? And again, showing you the leopard skin. Showing you that these was where they got the, the Egyptians got their traditions from. They got them from the little twa that started at the beginning of the Nile. Down in the Great Lakes region. Now, when you go into the Nordic, you see that, you know, the, the, the dwarves were responsible for making all the weaponry of the gods. They even made the hammer of Thor. If you watch this last, not the end game, not the uh, Avengers end game, but the Infinity Wars. You understand what I'm saying? Where, you know, you see the little dwarf called E-Tree. Okay, he's the king of the dwarves, and, and he had to make Thor a new weapon to fight uh. What's that crazy motherfucker that took over? Uh, I'll get his name. Put it in there, y'all. What's that? What was that motherfucker that had the uh the gaunt the gaunt the gauntlet with all the infinity stones in it? Thanos. That's right. Thanos. And and if I'm not mistaken, they might have been responsible for making the the motherfucking you know the uh the gauntlet that go on his hand. So as you see, and you know, we'll dig deep down into, you know, again, we got to understand that Ptah was the, the, the god of what? The blacksmiths, of the, of the craftsmen. You understand what I'm saying? He was the god of the masons, the one, not the Freemasons, the masons, meaning that they are the builders in stone. You understand? That's what a mason means, that you're a builder of stone, all that other shit. Is some some symbolism, wordplay shit. So we talking about real masons. We talking about operative masons that really build. Okay, and so you see that it, we 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 warming up, and this is E treaty, the, the the dwarf king. You see what I'm saying? And if you watched it, you understand what I'm saying. He was the one that was responsible for uh building. Wait a minute, come on. I got so much power on here. Come on, goddammit. But anyway, it's gonna it's gonna pop out. I, I ain't gonna I'm gonna play it again. I had to pop it out. There you go. So that's the new weapon that he had to construct because Thor had uh he had lost his you know he had you know his hammer had been destroyed. In a previous movie. By his sister. Hella. Okay so. E tree built. Uh, was responsible for building. Him another weapon. So again you see him. 
recognize the craftsmen. If you go into Lord of the Ring, they like the mountains. You see what I'm saying? Let me come out of that. You know, let me come out of that. They live in the mountains and shit. And we go, and you know, and you so when you get to Greek mythology, you will see the god of, of the blacksmith or the craftsman as Vulcan. And he lives inside of the, a volcano. You understand? Because the lava is what he used as far as smelting the, the steel and the iron and all of that. So these craftsmen, these gods of blacksmiths and gods of craftsmen, Hephaestus. Yeah, one, I think, is the Hephaestus is the Greek and Vulcan is the Roman uh, uh, equivalent. And they both live inside of the mountain. Okay? And so... Again, we don't understand and we get to it, we'll see that the pyramid is the house of fire. And we didn't understand that. That Ptah was the supreme deity of that age. So he's the craftsman inside of the house of fire that's constructing all was all of the uh the uh sacred elements of the universe. He's the architect of the universe. And you are here in the even in the Quran and even in the Bible, where God beat the, the heavens out. You understand what I'm saying? Like a craftsman will beat out iron and you know make a, a smooth a plate or whatever how they do and beat and take uh, uh, the hot iron, you know, that's when it's uh, hot and beat it out until it become a weapon. And so you will hear a lot of symbolism of Yahweh and Allah. Being a craftsman. Let me go back in here. We're going to talk this talk now. We're going to talk this talk. Matter of fact. I'm going to come down and come back up. Let me move this down. So you see her fastest. See, he's in the mountain. He's he's the god of craftsmen. That's Vulcan in the mountain. He's the god, even in uh, the Bible, even when Moses go up on the mountain, they'll talk about the black smoke, talk about the lightning, talk about, you know, uh, the fire that's emanating from, he was on the goddamn volcano. See what I'm saying? So you, you got to understand the wordplay and the symbolism. So when we understand... That Hephaestus and Vulcan living, and even in the Lord of the Rings, when you watch that one, the Hobbit, where they, you know, where they great uh, civilization, the Hobbits was inside of the mountain. And another thing, they were hoarders of gold. And then not only were they in a mountain, and not only were they a hoarder of gold, and we're going to understand that that's Nubia. Okay, we got to understand that that's Nubia, and we're going to deal with that. We're going to back that up. You understand? This was one of the strongholds of what we call the Anu. You understand? In ancient Egypt, the Twa were known as the Anu, and that they, one of their uh, great cities and strongholds was Nequata, which is also called Nut, N-U-B-T, which is the city of gold, and we're going to deal with that. Okay, so you see that the, 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 the god of craftsmen in the African uh, culture was Ptah, and the mountain of fire in which he lived in was the pyramid. Okay, was the pyramid. Let me come out of this. No, we're going to back this up. We're going to keep going. And so you see dwarf craftsmen in the mountain of high, uh, fire, pyramid house of fire. Now. Nah. So when you look and see that the, the pyramid is symbolic of the volcanoes that's in up to now. See, Egypt was a recreation of the southern regions. You see what I'm saying? When you look at the papyrus columns, the papyrus swamps was up in Sudan. When you talk about, uh, you know, you, you, when you look at uh, the, even the temple. Going as you go into the temple, you will find yourself as you go deeper and deeper and deeper into the uh, temple. You're going up and up. You're going up into the highlands. Each time you go up a level of steps, that's symbolic of you going up and up 
into the highlands, which they considered the Tanetaru, which is the Holy Land, which is in the mountain regions of Central East Africa. So when you get all the way up in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, that's why they call the southern land the land of the gods. Okay, and so again, so as you look to the left, you see the recreation because they didn't have the mountains down in Egypt. They didn't have that. Egypt is primarily lowland desert region. As you start to move further down south, yeah, you will see, uh, you know, some mountains such as over there with the Valley of the Kings, but down near the Giza region and all, you don't have that. That's why a lot of stone had to be sailed down into that area. Okay, so wait a minute. Where the volcanoes? Let me get this to God. I got so much information here. Where the volcanoes at? Here they go. Let me bring them up. Let me bring them up. Work, working in real time. Working in real time. So you see the red. You see those are the volcanoes. You see what I'm saying? And so this is the exact area in which we, you know, even today where you find many of the twa, you know, nations. You know, you got them in the Congo and then you got the Great Lakes twa. So you got many of the twa that's right around them lakes. And ain't no Lake Victoria in no goddamn Africa. Okay? She ain't even got no goddamn lake in Great Britain. To be got a goddamn lake in Africa. So we have to understand that that lake been criminally renamed. And we have to name, rename. We ain't got to rename. We just got to snatch the goddamn criminal names that have been put on our own holy land. We got to destroy that. Because ain't no guy. As long as you can look at a map that say Lake Victoria in Africa, nigga, you still in slavery. And so we got to deal with that. So as you look and see that the pyramid is the house of fire. And you got to understand what is that? That is the volcanoes. It's symbolic of the volcanoes that's up around the Great Lakes region, which is the homeland of all the Nile Valley Africans. When you look at that river now, what they call the criminally renamed for the White Nile, that's the source of the White Nile. It's flowing from that lake on down to Egypt. Okay, understand that. And so. Another thing, let's deal, uh, I want to deal with the fact that in, uh, in Nordic mythology, no matter of fact, let me go on and deal with it. You see, you know, the hammer of Thor. You understand what I'm saying? And we understand that, that, that tradition is the, is the sacred, uh, hammer of the Pharaoh or the, or the, uh, the, the mallet of the Pharaoh in which he used the war mace that he used when he go to war. And so I'm going to show you that many of these instances of what they still in our culture. You see what I'm saying? They still in our culture. The lands in which you call uh, the Viking lands was originally populated by Africans. And we're going to deal with that. Just like when you go into Britain, you see that the leprechaun is a hidden symbolism of the twa that was in that land before they got there, long before they got there. Okay, so when you're dealing with uh, the northern mythology, they got a mythology of the four dwarfs that's holding up the heavens. Odin command them to hold up the heavens. And so you see these four dwarfs is only symbolic of the cardinal points, meaning north, south, east, and west. No different than the four sons of Horus. Representing north, south, east, and west. These are the cardinal points. And when you go in, see they holding up the heavens. And then when you go into Egypt, you see you got two on this side of the sarcophagus, and then you go on the other side. And when you look at the little uh, rectangle at the top that they holding up, when you understand the symbolisms of ancient Egypt, you know that that symbolizes the heavens. And then when you go over to the old man, you just see the, the dwarves. I mean, well, we going to say twa. Let me stop that. You know, in this instant, we got to say what it is. And so you see that the, the twa had even come to the Americas. I'm going to show you even better to let you know that they twa. You see what I'm saying? That is, once you understand that only the African race got a, a, a branch of the race that's short people. That's us. You understand what I'm saying? That's us. 
And you can see them holding up the Hampton's. You go into the Naga Kush and you see the Nagas holding up the Hampton's. It's the, it's the same symbolism. You understand what I'm saying? And so, when you go into Europe, yesterday I didn't even have this up. I didn't even have the statue of the Venus of Willendorf. You will see, this is a map showing you where all the areas where they found one of the Venuses. Okay? And you see that that's a, a figurine, a, a, a fertility die, representing, again, a symbolic of uh, the deification and, and, and of childbirth of the great mother and these are the oldest statues of any human being on the planet so when we talk about the black woman is god we know exactly what the fuck we talking about before there was any masculine god on the planet the woman was already venerated as a god and so you go through all of europe you can see every dot on there is where they didn't file evidence of what they call the Grimaldi people. In, in Europe, you understand evidence of they, that original culture of African people that pre... We're talking about 40,000 B.C. We're not just talking... God damn, the European ain't even got a, a good 1,000 years on the continent of Europe. I just got to be clear about that. Well, the day they might got, you know, if you deal from zero, you understand 2,000... You understand what I'm saying? But once you go below zero in on this white man calendar, you, nigga, everything is up for suspicion. Every date, every goddamn thing cannot be validated. You understand? That's why they start that shit zero. Because that's when they ass came on the scene. Anything before zero AD, and even some of the shit after zero AD, is up for heavy dispute. So now you see, you know, the Roman, uh, 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 when the Romans came in, what they took over. See, they, they the ladder. See, they the ladder. And then here come the Nordics. You see what I'm saying? And when they came in, and, you know, the, the Africans was there. You see what I'm saying? And so these murderous motherfuckers, you see, murder. And so they say, St. Patrick murdered the snakes. And we're going to get to the snake because we know that that's one of our major zoo types, the Naga, the Uraeus, uh, Wajet, you understand, which is a goddess, protective goddess, that shoot that venom on the enemies of her African sons and her African nation. You see what I'm saying? And you see that, 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 serp, that cobra, that king cobra, queen, but it's a female king cobra, queen cobra that sit on the pineal gland of the Pharaoh, okay, and so we understand that now, so when you look at, uh, you look at, uh, the leprechaun, that's best, that's best, that's all that is, okay, that's best, when you, when you show, and they don't tell people that best is also a warrior deity, so when you see the dwarf with the shield, and he got his little, he got his little axe in his hand, and then here you see best with his shield, and his knife in his hand. See, y'all don't understand that when the, everything you can peel this shit back and see that you don't have to borrow from the beast because he done stole every fucking thing from you. And so you niggas go out there putting elves and shit on your goddamn, getting a tree, dragging the tree into the goddamn house, which is a, a fucking idol, pagan, European idol, you niggas dragging the goddamn tree into the house, pull the goddamn furniture out, put that shit outside, and bring the tree and goddamn shit falling all over the floor and shit, this down in the third motherfucking trees falling over, burning down the goddamn house and all kind of shit. You niggas is ridiculous. And so, let me come on, and so, even when you look over into Europe, this is what you're looking at. This is the, uh, the Adam and Eve's uh, uh, twat over there, Past Indy. So when motherfuckers sit up here, I say, well, nigga, you know, motherfuckers think you making up something when you say that the Nagas, the Africans, uh, uh, was the founders of India. And that, that's coming up. And you, motherfucker, they past India. What the fuck is you talking about? They in the islands. How the hell you think they got down in them islands? You understand? Past India. So when you look at 
the Venus is in, and you see the little short woolly, this is what you're looking at. This is what you're looking at. You're looking at the little twa women who have been venerated as goddesses all through Europe, all through Africa, all through Asia. And so when you see Adamai, you uh you see her in the in, in the pink area, you see it at the top. It's past India. Past India. They didn't went around into the Philippines, even up into Japan, even into southern China. They show you the area in which they and so many of these these uh Nations of Twa have been wiped out because of these vicious motherfuckers. The Indian ain't nothing but a beast. Because he didn't commit genocide. And they fighting even today on, on the island of uh, uh, Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. You understand what I'm saying? That Papua New Guinea want to break away from Indonesia. Because the most stinking ass Chinese Indonesian motherfuckers is committing genocide. On, and they need to break away. You understand what I'm saying? It, and these was this was one of the last uh, uh, speakers of a, a ancient language in uh, India, or uh, in uh, in in the Adamai Islands called the Bo language. And again, showing you the stronghold. Uh, so they were all through Europe. They was all through Asia, all even into the Americas. Okay, had to break this shit down. Let me come on down, family. Let me come on down to back this up. Now, another thing that you're going to see that's connected with uh, these, uh, especially in the Lord of the Ring. If you saw that last one, the Hobbit, you see now you got the mountain. You understand what the mountain is, the pyramid. You understand that it's a volcano. This is when the Africans, they deified the volcano. It was looked at as something that was sacred because you see the four elements in the volcano. When you see that volcano, what is what does it do? First and foremost, you got the fire. Fire, air, water, and earth. You see what I'm saying? Fire, air, water, and earth. When that lava come up, that's right, and it come up and it come down the side of the mountain, it hit that water. You see what I'm saying? And with that water, it makes steam. And then you understand once that lava cool after it hit that water, what does it do? It make new land. Okay, that's how land come about. So the volcano, you see all four elements of creation in the volcano. And so you see that the dragon is all, was the one inside of the mountain, what? Protecting the gold. So we go on, we understand that with the, the pyramid, we're talking about the Nubians. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about the pyramid. And when we understand what that dragon is, I've been teaching you that the, in Egypt, the Naga is nothing but the, the winged serpent. That's all the dragon is, is the, wing, the, wing, the uh, winged serpent, which you see right here. Okay? You see right there, the winged serpent. That's all that that is. And I'm going to show you exactly what they're trying to uh, bring about. You understand? When you go into Nubia, you see what? Uh, Jabil, Jabel Bakar, which is the mountain of Amun. If you ever look it up, this is in the Potter, and you see that, this, the, which they, you know, symbolize as the Uraeus, as the serpent. So this is the serpent that's guarding, or the dragon that's guarding the mountain. And this is in Nubia, the land of the gold. See, we got to break this shit down today. You understand? We got to quit going and spend. I don't even watch that shit. Once I realized it was a degradation of my people, and the, and they did us real bad in the Lord of the Ring. Fuck the Lord of the Ring. They did our people real bad when you look at the symbolisms behind that. When you look at the Uraeus on the forehead of the Pharaoh, that's what you see at the front of the mountain. Now, over years, it, it was more prominent. And it even looked like it got uh, the, the uh, southern crown on its head. You understand what I'm saying? So the Africans, and not just the Africans, even the Egyptians made pilgrimages. The kings made pilgrimages. The priesthood made pilgrimages to this mountain to... to uh, to uh, pray and venerate the great God Amen. And that says a lot that his seat 
Amun, which was the supreme deity of all of Egypt, his house was in Nubia. We got to understand that, family. So again, you see here the Hobbit, and you see this this uh uh dragon that's guarding the gold. I'm gonna show you right here. You see it? And so he guarding the gold. Now, let me bring you to this. If I, I did the one on set, and I'm gonna have to bring you back to this. Okay? Set Lord of Nubia land of gold. Now we understand. Wait a minute, hold up. Let me show you the A new. Before I get there. See now, this is a, a photo of Terranetta. This is a tile that uh, the thieving British Egyptologist Flinders Petrie found in the what is the temple of Abydos today. Up under the, you know, because many of these temples, they rebuild them and they rebuild them and they rebuild them. So if you dig up under one, you will find the uh, foundation of the one preceding it. You see what I'm saying? And you keep and go up there and find even more ancient. You might find three, four, five different foundations. And so when he went up under the foundation of the temple that's there today, this is where he found this tile. And this is the tile of Terranetta. Okay? And it was found, uh, I think, between 1853. This is when Flanders Patrick lived. Now, when you look at what's on it, you see that they were uh, worshippers of the god Set. You see Set there. You see the little Anu, which is the Twa people. We just dealt with that. And you see he got the staff, which means he was a uh, rank. He was a chief. He was a king. And you see on line three, cities of the Anu people. Line four, Terranata, Terranata, the devoted one to God. Okay, and so you see these are the founders of ancient Egypt, the little twa. Now let me deal with this now. Let me deal with this so I can bring bring this shit home now. Now this is a, a facet of, a, on a temple of, of Sesestris the third. Okay, and it says palm branches presented to the king, Litno of Sesestris the third. On on the left side you see hey Ru. On the right side, you see Set. Now listen, Set standard on Litno of Sestris the Third from the Quadra El Madamu uh, Twelve Dynasty. Note to the Gold Town Newt hieroglyphs, since he is associated with Newt, aka Nequada. Okay, and so you gonna see that at that city you find many instances. Uh, of the little twa that was in that city. You see what I'm saying? So the twa was also associated with gold. Okay? They were associated with gold. And so you see that these little, you know, the, this was actually, when you look at all that gold that the dragon, this was the mountain of the little dwarves. But the dragon then took it over. It's his shit now. You see what I'm saying? But the the dwarves is the one that, I don't know if they forged the gold, but I think they was, the, and the gold was in the mountain. And so they forged all these different exotic artifacts out of gold and this, that, and the third. So you see that the symbolisms in Northern mythology, the symbolisms even with the leprechaun, at the end of the goddamn rainbow, what? Gold. Gold. They got this shit from ancient Africa. They, you know, this is, it, it, matter of fact, our peoples had it up there. It ain't like they came to Africa. We have to understand that the, the, the Twa was the original people of Europe. They were already there. And that when the Ice Age receded, them goddamn uh, Europe, you know, these Caucasoids came from up out of Russia. That's their heartland. That's their homeland. Quit letting them tell you something about the caucus mouth. That's not where they came from. They ass came further back in Ural Mountains. They didn't come from be the caucus mountains. Africans had that as a stronghold. Okay? They had that as a stronghold. So, I, I'm going to bring you down. And, and see, we got to look at this. In this goddamn uh, Lord of the Rings. See, Mordor. See, we understand that more means black. 
And you see them mountains. You see them goddamn mountains. So it's like they done took the Nile Valley and they done turned it into some evil. And you see at Mordor, they call it, the, which is really the pyramid, the mountain of doom. You see what I'm saying? The mount, the mount of doom. That's Mordor. What it, it's the pyramid. It's the house of fire. You see what I'm saying? They didn't scandalize our culture. This stuff. And so even when you look at the, the uh, which ain't nothing but an obelisk. And then at the top, you see the horns of Hede Ru, and then you see the eye of Horus. Right there, three symbols in one, and you see the pyramid, and they done demonized our culture. That's nothing but the horns of Hede Ru with the eye of Ra. That's a, and then you got the phallic symbol, which only symbolizes the obelisk. That's all that it is. Let me come out of that. Now, I'm going to come down here because I, I got some treats that I didn't show yesterday. You know, I didn't show a lot of this shit yesterday. Now, nah, this is for motherfuckers that just, this is the journal of the Royal Institution of Cornwall. You corny motherfuckers. We got you. Index 1907-1977. You see what I'm saying? What do they say? On page 20. Footprints of vanished races in Cornwall. What does they say? They say, I believe, listen to me, that the first human beings who entered Cornwall in the Neolithic period belonged to a race of dwarfs or pygmies that were veritably little people. The study of dwarf races in a new branch of anthropology, and it is wonderfully developed during the last 20 years. Ancient or classical authors mentioned pygmies living in the remote parts of Asia and Africa and the conflicts of the late latter with the cranes were described in amusing language. These stories were for long thought to be childish inventions, but recent discoveries have proved that they were perfectly correct. When the Dutch occupied South Africa, they met with the dwarf bushmen who were the smallest put pygmies in all the world. And so, listen, we're dealing with blacksmiths, we're dealing with Vulcan, we're dealing with the dwarves, as the, as the smelters of the, the great weaponry of the gods of, of, of Thor, of Odin, and all this. We go to South Africa, where this cracker than already said, when the Dutch occupied South Africa, they met with the dwarf bushmen, who were the smallest pygmies, in the world. Now we go to Johannesburg, South Africa. This is from the New York Times, February 8, 1970. We got the newsletter right here, Johannesburg, Africa, February 7. South African archaeologists have reported discovering the world's oldest mine. The mine, listen, in an iron ore mountain. Woo! <laughs> Boy, boy, boy. Sadie, I don't know what you... I don't know where your brain... Niggas like your brain just fell out the cosmos some goddamn. I go where no nigga can go, man. I'm telling you this shit. Listen to this. The mine in an iron ore mountain in neighboring Swaziland. It's 43,000 years old according to radiocarbon dating. Damn. 43,000 years. Okay, 43,000 years, and the white boy just showed up two days ago. And he got enough nerve to talk about when he came to South Africa, wasn't nobody on the land. You lying bitch, you. The motherfuckers, and then you got to understand, if they got an iron ore mine at 43,000 years, listen to that. And then they want to talk about niggas was still developing from monkeys and shit. About 1,000, 100,000, 100, how the fuck you gonna jump from a goddamn monkey to goddamn iron ore mining and shit? You understand what I'm saying? If they was mining iron out of a goddamn, first you got to understand how hot you got to get a furnace to even melt metal. You understand what I'm saying? And what is your reason for melting the metal? You understand what I'm saying? It would have taken you... How many tens of thousands of years to get to that point? You understand what I'm saying? 
so this shit really destroys any talking about a motherfucker evolved and shit. Man, motherfucker been a man, an African god and goddess on this planet from day goddamn one. We've always been advancing the higher sciences of, of the universe. We've never been on no low level like these motherfuckers has claimed. They're trying to destroy our history. Let me let me deal with something. As we go into, and we still dealing with the Nordics. We still dealing with the Nordics. Now, as we said, it was the dwarfs that made uh, Thor's hammer. And Santa's elves, which ain't nothing but dwarves, makes the toys. So you can you got to see that in, even in Santa, he's a craftsman. You understand what I'm saying? These are stories that come all the way down from Ptah, from Imhotep. These motherfuckers have taken many great symbolisms from the Twa that was in Europe. They have reworked it. They have put Caucasoid images in there to change the facts of who's the originator. You see right there where Santa Claus ain't nothing but Thor. And many people don't break down even Thor. You see that whore, which is uh, H-O-R, is Horus. We don't even look at that. But it ain't the fact that they knew that that's the German who's invented the goddamn metal natter. He identified Horus and spelt it in veneration of one of his own great deities. Y'all niggas thinking, that, oh, dude, dude, these motherfuckers can't even spell today. They couldn't read no damn metal natter. That was them goddamn Germans, the motherfucker, which you talking about Hebrew and Yiddish and all of that shit. That shit ain't nothing but German. So them Germans, uh, Adolf Ehrman and all them motherfuckers was uh, responsible for creating the metal nether. And so they started naming Egyptian deities after goddamn Nordic deities. That's, that's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. That is really, really, really a damn shame. And so you see here the little elves who make the toys. They the craftsmen. And y'all don't see that that go all the way back to the little Twa Pata. You see, the hammer is the symbol of the craftsman as Santa was also a carpenter. And so when you see, I, I could damn that end right here. You understand? When you see this motherfucker Thor with his hammer up there, you know, in the smiting of the enemy. He's in the smiting of the enemy. And we could go all the way back. You can look at the even the helmet, all of that. Go back to ancient Africa. This is the Twaz, one of you know the beautiful uh, you know branches of the African race, responsible for so much great information. Stellar people, the ones that charted the stars, started charted the constellations, charted the uh, the, the the solar year. Responsible for all irons and you know melting of, of metals and jewelry and so on and so forth. These are the twa. You know what I'm saying? And so, family, I, I'm gonna come on up out. Let me come on up out. I, Cause I can't get. I be giving family. I love y'all, man. Straight up, I love dropping this wisdom like this. I laugh. Cause you ain't gonna lie to me, bees. You ain't gonna lie to me. I got you. I'm one motherfucker that got you. You won't see this on Wikipedia. I'm trying to tell y'all, give up on the Wikipedia scholars. They ain't even got the ability to do research. Them up, and I'm talking about, it. it's all right. To, and I keep throwing that out because it's funny. I keep watching motherfuckers. I say, damn, let me watch and see what family doing. Now. And I go and look and shit and watch videos. And, and I say, damn, let me go do some research. And I might check on Wikipedia. And damn, when I listen to the video, the motherfucker reading from the top to the bottom. Ain't done no research. I say, God damn. When you take and look at the, the uh, you know, whatever information on the subject in Wikipedia, you can damn near see the motherfucker going down word from word. I say, God damn, you reading the whole goddamn Wikipedia goddamn uh, uh, print up. I say, what the fuck is wrong with niggas? Niggas ain't doing no research of their own. So it's sad to see that today. You know what I'm saying? But family, I'm telling you, go check it out. Go check out the volcanoes. Go check out the pyramid. Go check out Ptah. 
Go check it all out. Go check out the uh, and and if you if you can find me to be wrong, I'll give you a million motherfucking dollars. We can do this shit whenever you feel like it. I'll meet you anywhere, anytime, and I will refruit your ass up and down. We got the fact, even got the white boy, and, the, and all the time the South Africans say when they got there wasn't nobody there, and the goddamn British they don't give a fuck about the Dutch no goddamn way. Br the British don't even like the motherfucking Dutch. Matter of fact, they went to war with their ass. The Boer, the Boer War. You understand? And took South Africa from the Dutch. The Dutch had it first and motherfucking the, the British man told on his ass. Say, bitch, when you got there, you said the twa was there. Quit lying and talking about wasn't nobody there. Bitch, the Africans was there. You see what I'm saying? So family or uh, Europe. And so this is where you, the information is coming. It, it wasn't like they came to Africa and discussed this with the twa in Africa. The twa was in Europe. When the white man came from behind the Ural Mountains in Russia, when he came down on what you call Europe, the Twa were already there. This is where they got that information. And because the Twa is, you know, they got the same culture worldwide. They was associated with gold. They were already blacks. This is where they learned how to smell from, how to melt iron from the Twa. And so that the gold and the things that they saw, that's how they learned how to smell gold and make Jewelry. They didn't know nothing about. They learned it from the Twa, and so they associated all of that from the leprechaun with gold and this, that, and this. that's why they associated it with the little short people. Changed it up, made it because it was magical to them. It was mystical and magical to them the way our African people was able to do that. You see what I'm saying? So, family, go do your research. I love to drop this knowledge. Coming right back. Coming right black. Don't go no goddamn where. We about to drop the occult origins of days, months, and uh, pl of the planets. We got to deal with this because whoever control the wheel control the, f the, the field. You understand what I'm saying? The motherfucker who control the calendar, control time, he control your ass. He tell you when you go to work. He control the economy. He know your ass got to go to work. He know how many hours... You got to put in, nigga, so you don't, you don't starve. He, he already got you mapped out. So whoever controls the holidays, the seasons, the stars, the calendar, he controls the world. And so in order for motherfuckers, and so we can't say we trying to, you know, we revolutionary and we still on the man's wheel. You can't do that. You got to, you, you know, revolutionary overturn everything that means the calendar that means the wheel that means the economy that means the holidays that means the seasons i'll be right black family check it out don't go no goddamn where i'll be black in goddamn five minutes black power